Hello, welcome back to Mbakwa Phosphate Academy of Science and Technology. Uh, today videos we are looking at uh, chemical kinetics, that's rate of reactions, and uh, we are looking at uh, the factors that will affect the rate of chemical reactions. We'll be looking at the surface area, we'll be looking at the concentration of reactants, we'll be looking at temperature, pressure, catalyst, and light. All these are factors that they are going to actually affect the rate of chemical reactions. Uh, the first thing we will be looking at will be the surface area of reactant. And I came into this laboratory with uh, a lump of calcium carbonate. You can see a lump of calcium carbonate. Yeah, this is a lump of calcium carbonate. You can see a lump of calcium carbonate. And then I will want us to see the you know the uh, powder form of calcium carbonate powder form of calcium carbonate now if we have calcium carbonate in the powder form you can see i have powder calcium carbonate now you see this this powder calcium carbonate now we are talking about surface area now you see if i take powder calcium carbonate as such, you see this powder calcium carbonate, and I put in this other beaker. Now you see the powder calcium carbonate going to you know uh, have so many particles of the calcium carbonate that are available for reactions. You can see this available for reactions calcium carbonate. Now, but if we are using the lomic form of calcium carbonate, you see so many particles are not available for reaction. So many particles are not available for reaction. So today's video, we will be looking at uh, the first factor that will affect the rate of chemical reaction is concentration. Uh, you know, surface area of reactant. The surface area of the reactant and uh, the surface area if you increase the surface area by using powder 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 calcium carbonate instead of the lomic uh, form of calcium carbonate you will observe that the reaction will be faster when we use powder calcium carbonate instead of the lomic form of calcium carbonate permit me to take you to the classroom remember we are using technology to teach you here on this platform don't forget to hit the subscribe button you can contact Bakwa phosphate academy at Bakwa phosphate at gmail.com the number is on the screen you can always contact us using that number Mbakwa Phosphate Academy of Science and uh, Technology. Factors affecting the rate of reactions. So we're looking at the first factor will be the surface area. Okay. Okay, here we are. Factors affecting the rate of chemical reaction. And uh, in this video, we'll be looking at the different factors as we see on the board. We have concentration, we have surface area of reactant, we have temperature, we have light, we have pressure, we have catalyst. Now we are taking the first. We will be looking at, let me highlight please. Good. The first factor 
what we can call one is the surface area of reactant surface area of reactant just like I've already explained this is for reaction that involves solid we cannot talk about surface area of reactant when the uh, reacting you know particles the reactant do not have solid for example uh, breaking the solid into smaller pieces increases I've already explained that is going to increase the surface area and uh, there is more contact what will happen is that there will be more contact with the reactant and so the rate of the reaction is going to be increased let us take for example the reaction between the calcium carbonate which is a solid plus two moles of LCL which is aqueous to give us calcium chloride which is aqueous plus carbon dioxide plus water now this is an example of a reaction in which we can clearly talk about the surface area of calcium carbonate now if we use powder if we use powder calcium carbonate if we use powdered calcium carbonate the rate of the reaction is going to be more than when we just use the lomic form of calcium carbonate you can see this this is the lomic form of calcium carbonate the number of particles available for reaction is not as the powder form when you grind the calcium carbonate into the powder form you exactly you will see this you see that the number of you know reactant particles available for reaction will be greater and so there will be increase in what chemists call effective collision and when there is increase in collision there will therefore be an increase in effective collision and when there's an increase in effective collision then you are going to have an increase in the rate of reaction remember we have already explained that a rate, rate of reaction is simply the decrease in the concentration of the reactant with respect to time or the increase in the concentration of the product with respect to time now we want to see an energy level diagram for a reaction let me say for example if I have a reaction that I use the solid lomic form of calcium carbonate if I have a graph of you know let me have a graph of volume of carbon dioxide gas produced against the time in second if we measure the volume of calcium uh, carbon dioxide produced during this reaction against time and we plot a graph of volume against time we observe that the graph will be as shown above this graph is when we are using calcium carbonate solid in the lomic form in the lomic form that means we still have not yet in the powder form but in the lomic lomic form you know, uh, uh, let, let us say that we have uh, the reactions taking place at a time when we have not break down this calcium carbonate into powdered form we are now in the lomic form as such if we have a graph like this then we expect 
we expect that if we now grind the calcium carbonate into powder form then this is how the graph will look like we expect a graph like this we expect a graph like this this is when we use powder powder calcium carbonate let me show you what is happening let me say that at a certain time say two seconds we are expecting to have we extrapolate to the graph we are expecting to have a certain volume here say the volume is 30 cm cube of carbon dioxide that was produced that was when we are using the lomic the lomic calcium carbonate now if we extrapolate to the graph of the graph expected when we have a powdered calcium carbonate you observe that we are going to have about 60 cm cube what does that tell us it tells us that when we are using powdered calcium carbonate we are going to have an increase in the rate of the reaction such that at a time when the time is two seconds the reaction the volume of carbon dioxide produced was 30 cm cube but at the same two seconds now we expect a volume of 60 cm cube to be produced so you see reaction has increased where we use powder calcium carbonate take note if you are asked to use an example to explain how surface area of a reactant can influence the rate of a chemical reaction you can use this particular reaction on the board this reaction is between calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid I cannot talk about the surface area for hydrochloric acid given that this is a liquid we can only talk here but about the concentration but we are going to look at the next the next uh, you know uh, reaction which we are going to be looking at the concentration or the pressure of the reactant changing the pressure or the concentration of the reactant so that is that for surface area Number two, we have concentration, we have concentration, or we have pressure, yeah, concentration or pressure, and you know concentration is measured in mole per dm cube. So, this when we talk about concentration, this is only for gaseous reaction. This is for gaseous reaction, eh? Uh -huh. And reaction taking place in solution. If we're talking about gaseous reaction and reaction taking place in solution, generally, if we increase the concentration of the reactant, it will lead to an increase in the rate of reaction. If we increase the concentration of reactant, it lead to increase in the rate of reaction and just like you know it will increase the increasing the pressure a, a concentration means we are increasing what pressure we are increasing the pressure let me just take an example of a kind of reaction that we can talk about increase in concentration let us look at the reaction between the metals like magnesium plus you know uh, sulfuric acid aqueous to give us magnesium sulfate which is also aqueous plus hydrogen gas which is produced yeah hydrogen gas remember that metals they are going to displace hydrogen from the from acid now if we are carrying out this reaction and uh, we are using say we use one molar sulfuric acid remember when we say one molar it means that the concentration here is one molar the concentration here is one molar and um, we already know that uh, molarity as you saw the other video in uh, we talk about molarity and concentration don't if you have not seen that video you can check that video on my site, Mbakwa Phosphate Academy of Science and Technology. 
we explain concentration and molarity we said concentration when measured in mole per tm cube is equal to molar concentration and it is equal to molarity that's what we explain okay so we see that now if i use one molar so i'm using one molar knowing that you already know what i'm talking about if i use one molar sulfuric acid if i use one molar sulfuric acid the reaction will be such that it is going to be uh, in terms of the rate of the reactions uh, will be slower than when I use two molar sulfuric acid. When I use two molar sulfuric acid, I have so many molecules of sulfuric acid that is available for collision. For example, let me just take for example that one molar sulfuric acid will give me 6.02 times 10 to the what? 23 sulfuric acid molecules available for collision. Two molar means we should multiply the Avogadro constant by two. Two molar, meaning that we have one mole dissolved in one TM cube. Two molar means we have two moles. So we double the number of molecules available for collision. If we double the number of molecules available for collision, it means that we, are, we have doubled the number of you know, effective collisions. And if we double the number of effective collisions, you know that when you increase the concentration, you are increasing the pressure. Yes, you are increasing the pressure. The number of molecules that are available for collision, there are so many now packed closer together so they can now quickly collide. When they collide, the result is that there will be more effective collisions than we expected when we were using one molar. And the end result here is that what? That the reaction is going to increase. The rate of the reaction will increase when we are using two molar sulfuric acid than when we use one molar sulfuric acid. I cannot talk about concentration and pressure when I'm not talking about gaseous reaction or reactions in solution. Now, for gaseous reaction, let me take for example, pressure will be actually uh, in gaseous reaction. For example, let's take for example the reaction of uh, nitrogen monoxide. Yeah, where we react nitrogen monoxide plus two moles of oxygen gas to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. Now to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. So we see that the reaction rate is going to double when the concentration of oxygen doubles. When we, excuse me, these two here, when we double the concentration of oxygen, when we double the concentration of oxygen, the reaction rate will double. Yeah. So but doubling the concentration of nitrogen, you know, nitrogen monoxide, we see that the reaction will instead quadruple. The rate of the reaction will be four times. Yeah. So what does that mean? So for reaction involving for gases, increasing the pressure, increasing the pressure of a gas, we are doing so by increasing the concentration. So a given volume that uh, is going to contain a, a, a given volume now will be containing more, you know, um, many number of moles. So when we talk about concentration pressure, they are like linked together. So in this particular reaction, where we increase the concentration, uh, uh, say we, uh, we double the concentration of oxygen gas, we are going to double the reaction. So reaction here will be first order for advanced level students. Uh, when we double the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, the reaction rate will be quadrupled. That will be four times that second order reactions. Okay, now, we, we will understand that advanced level students watching this video you understand what i'm talking about now you see that for gaseous reactions we can talk about increasing pressure when we increase the pressure we are causing more molecules to come closer together where we cause more molecules to come closer together by increasing the pressure is example we are this is a container we reduce the volume of the container by increasing uh, the pressure by increasing the pressure on the available molecules this is going to lead to more effective collisions and as the collision increases, we see that the rate of the reaction is going to increase. So, increase in pressure leads to increase in rate of reactions for gaseous reaction. Increase in concentration will lead to increase in the rate of reaction for reactions that are in solution. For solutions, for reactions that take place in solution. Take note about that. We want to go to the next. And in this case, we are going to be looking at the third, which is... Temperature. Number three, temperature.
temperature. Temperature. Now, we see that increasing the temperature of a reactant, what will happen? In we increase the rate of the reaction. When the temperature is increased, what happens? We see that the average speed of the reactant is going to increase. The average speed of the reactant is going to increase. So reactants are going to, you know, begin to increase their speed. When the reactant molecule begin to increase their speed, what happens? You must take note. In the other video when I'm talking about, you know, reversible reactions and equilibrium reactions, you, we, you know, re, a chemical equilibrium, I, I, I will be explaining that, you know, when you increase the temperature the te for, you know, a, 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 the equilibrium position will either shift to the left or to the right depending on whether or not the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So, this is different. But we are here at the studying just the rate of chemical reactions. We are looking just at the rate of chemical reactions. And uh, uh, when we look at the rate of chemical reactions, we are saying that when you increase the temperature of the reaction, for example, if I have a reaction that I'm carrying out the reaction at, say, room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Let me try to say that this is our energy. This is, let me say, I, I carry out this reaction at, uh, you know, uh, you know, let me s take an example of a reaction. Just take, for example, we have the same reaction that we did above. So, for the acid reacting with magnesium to give us magnesium sulfate plus hydrogen gas. So, if I have to plot a graph of the volume of hydrogen in cm cube produced. And then against time in second, let me say that I carry out this reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, and this is the graph at 25 degrees Celsius that I have when I plot a graph of volume of hydrogen against time in second. Now, what would be the expected graph when I carry out? say 50 degree Celsius and then I carry out at say 15 degree Celsius. What will be the expected curve? I expect that what? When I carry out the reaction at say 50 degree Celsius I've increased the temperature. This is the expected graph. This is the expected graph. Why? Because the rate of the reaction has increased. Just take a second time, two seconds, when the volume we expected to have was 30 seconds, we will extrapolate this volume again to meet the curve that we expect at this time. You see that we are about 60 cm cube. We are about 60 cm cube. Now, what will be the expected curve if I carry out the reaction at a, a smaller temperature, say 15 degrees Celsius? This is what I will expect. Are you saying? So I will expect now that you see the where it is touching the I'm about say 15 degrees Celsius. So increase in temperature increases the speed, the kinetic and the potential energy of the reacting particles. And this is going to do what? This is going to increase the number of effective collisions. And so this will lead to increase in the rate of reaction. At two seconds, we expect to have 60 cm cube of hydrogen gas produced. Of which, when we carry out the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, we had at 2 seconds 30 degrees Celsius. When we reduce the temperature from 25 to 15 degrees, we have about 15 degrees, 15 cm cube, sorry, 15 cm cube, 15 cm cube of hydrogen gas produced at say 15 degrees Celsius. You can see that decrease in temperature lead to decrease in the rate of reaction Increase in temperature lead to increase in the rate of reaction. That is very important to note. Temperature. Now, we want to look at another, you know, another kind of terms which we have already defined it before now. We say that when you increase the temperature, the number of reacting molecules 
that will react with an energy which we call EA. You can remember in the last video called the activation energy, called the activation energy, activation energy. EA is activation. So when you increase the temperature of a reactor, you increase the activation energy. Yeah, you increase the activation energy of the, uh, you know, you, you have not increased the activation energy, sorry. You increase the number of reacting particles that is going to react with energy which is equal to the activation energy. So that is the reason why increasing temperature increases the rate of the reaction. The next thing we want to look at will be light. 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 There are some reactions that will not take place in the absence of light. These reactions that will take place in the presence of light, they are called photochemical reactions. They are called photo chemical reactions yes they are called photochemical reactions and we see example of this kind of reactions the reaction between carbon dioxide and water you see this reaction which we normally say it is photosynthesis we have solar energy absorbed by the green pigment in plant called chlorophyll to give us carbohydrate C6H12 O6 carbohydrate C6 O6 that is carbohydrate plus oxygen gas given as a byproduct of course we need to balance this reaction six moles of oxygen now you see that these photochemical reactions like photosynthesis like photosynthesis cannot take place in the absence of light. You also have the, you know, chlorination of uh, methane in organic chemistry. The substitution of methane, you see, by a series of substitution take place there between methane and chlorine in the presence of UV light. This reaction of halogens with chlorine cannot take place in the absence of light. And we have a series of substituted products. We have chloromethane. We also have dichloromethane. Of course, hydrogen chloride is produced in each of the reactions. We have dichloromethane, trichloromethane, tetrachloromethane. A series of substitution reactions take place. So, you see, all these reactions cannot take place in the absence of light. These reactions are called photochemical reactions. So these reactions, when you use light, it increases the rate of the reaction. When you don't use light, it will not affect the rate of that reaction. That is wonderful. We go to the next today. That is point number five. We are looking at catalyst. Catalyst interestingly we are looking at catalyst and uh, for reactions that are catalyzed by catalyst we will observe that what happens what first let us know what is a catalyst catalysts are substances that will increase the rate of a reaction they increase the rate of reaction rate of reaction and so, if I have a reaction as such, an expected reaction, for example, 
we can take the production of ammonia this reaction we say that it is negative exothermic reaction we can balance the equation by putting 3 here the equation is balanced now this production of I ammonia we use finely divided iron finely divided iron finely divided iron as a catalyst so the finely divided iron is going to increase the speed of the reaction increases the rate of the reaction so if we carry out the reaction in the absence of the catalyst we expect this curve say the production of ammonia which is a gas the volume of ammonia in cm cube against time in second which is a gas we expect that if this is the reaction without without a catalyst then the reaction that we are going to have with the catalyst will be as shown above this will be the catalyzed reaction the catalyzed reaction what does that mean it means that when you use a catalyst the rate of reaction increases you can see with me that at a certain time say four seconds we expected about 20 cm cube of ammonia to be produced and then at a certain time say the same four seconds now when we use a catalyst finely divided ion we expect about 40 cm cube of ammonia to be produced now you see so when you use a catalyst in a reaction it speed up the rate of the chemical reaction it is important for us to know what happens when a catalyst is used what therefore how do the catalyst speed up the rate of a chemical reaction it is important for us to note that when we use a catalyst when we use a catalyst for example when we use a catalyst good good when we use a catalyst you will observe that when we use a catalyst what happened is that the catalyst is going to reduce the activation energy let us take for example an exothermic reaction remember that in thermochemistry in thermochemistry thermochemistry will tell us the feasibility of a chemical reaction but it is not going to tell us how fast or how slow the reaction will be if this is energy in kilojoules if this energy and this is the reaction coordinate then we can say that this is data H of product and this is data H of reactant so if we have a reaction of say a plus B reacting to give us the product C now you see that when we are not this is the reaction we expect where we have not used a catalyst on catalyzed reaction on catalyzed reaction now if we use a catalyst if we use a catalyst look at what a catalyst does the catalyst simply come and reduce the activation energy this is the activation energy for the uncatalyzed reaction let us call this EA1 uncatalyzed reaction and this is now the new activation energy in the presence of a catalyst call it EA2 so in the presence of a catalyst you see that the activation energy is reduced such that many particles of A and B can now collide to form product C are you seeing to form product C is a C plus D so when we use a catalyst 
It helps to reduce the activation energy. Take note. The catalyst help to reduce the activation energy. And of course, we say the activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to start a chemical reaction. So now, when we use a catalyst, many, more, many molecules will be able now to collide with an energy which is equal to or more than the activation energy. Remember the last video? Click the subscribe button if you are new to our channel. And if you enjoy the channel, you click, click the subscribe button. You can equally click the, the share button. And look at the other video where I spoke about the collision theory. I said in the collision theory that if, you know, for uh, according to collision theory, any reaction that is about to take place, particles must collide. Number two, particles must collide with an energy which is equal to O, which is more than the activation energy. And number three, particles must collide with the right orientation. They must collide with the right orientation. So you see that Delta H of this reaction can be calculated from thermochemistry, yeah, and it is said to be delta H of product minus delta H of reactant. Now, of course, this will be negative, which means that if you are carrying out this reaction in a beaker, your hand will be warm to tell you that the reaction is exothermic heat is released during the reaction. This is an energetic, and, and you know, an energetic, uh, uh, exothermic energy level diagram and we see that in the presence of a catalyst a new activation energy is available for the reactant molecules or reactant particles so many more reactants will be able to now collide with energy which we call the effective you know activation energy resulting to effective collisions so many effective collisions will now lead to what many effective collisions will now lead to the reaction taking place Thank you so much. We want to say that it is also the last factor for today, which is pressure. We have already talked about pressure, and we say pressure is only for gaseous reactant. Gaseous reactant. When you increase the pressure, you bring so many molecules together. When you increase the pressure, bringing so many molecules together, what happens is that as you bring so many molecules together, there is more effective collisions and the rate of the reaction is increased. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is Mbakwa Phosphate Academy. This is Mbakwa Phosphate Academy. And we are blessed that you are there. We are happy that you are there. If you were not there, we would not be here. Don't forget to keep, uh, you know, uh, sharing our videos. Our colleagues, we are always available. We want to hear from you. What do you think we would have said? What do you think we would have removed from our videos? We admit the fact we are still learning. And you, as long as you are a student, you keep making mistakes and keep trying to, you know, kind of adjust. We believe that one day we'll be able to have the best video for you. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel. And we equally expect that as you subscribe to our channel, you should also hit the share button. Don't forget to write on markwaphosphate at gmail.com. Presently now we run a six months program where we are able to work with you online to finish your syllabus. You can also subscribe to those programs. It will help you in chemistry. Yeah, we work with you online for six months and you are able to finish your syllabus in chemistry in just six months. We equally run a scratch program in chemistry for three months program where we are able to drill you and help you for any exam, be it international or internal exams. And uh, don't forget for the advanced level and for the ordinary level student, we take four months and we are able to touch all the part of chemistry online. It's interesting. If you have WhatsApp, you have a, you know, you have a handout, you have other applications in, on social media, don't hesitate, subscribe to our channel and then write us, indicate to us you are interested with our program We'll be able to contact you and our number is right on the screen six plus two three seven six seven nine nine five three one eight five bye bye for now thank you so much don't forget to hit the subscribe button bye bye this is mark phosphate academy
Hello, 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 hello. This is Bakwa Phosphate Academy. Bakwa Phosphate Academy of Science and Technology.